topic um, is meditation for enlightenment. Um, actually, all the uh, suttas are discourses given by the Buddha for enlightenment. So I, we won't be covering 17,000 suttas, but today I decided to choose um, the collection, collected discourses of uh, stream entry. So stream entry is the first stage of enlightenment. Right, so you can find this in the chapter 55, Samyutta uh, 11, All right? And they comprise of about the 74 suttas. So what I'm going to do is to condense and let you know what the essence of that collection uh, of suttas are. Okay, so this is stream entry. So uh, the administrator will send out the Samyutta depending on the, whether you're interested. So stream entry Samyutta Nikaya number 11, chapter 55. Right, huh? And there are about uh, 74. The last uh, stanza is 63, but I think it's a repeat until 74. So what, why do we want to talk about uh, stream entry? Right. So it is like one particular uh, chieftain or minister in the Sakyan country. He's called Mahanama. Like he is the prime minister there. So Sakyan country, the capital is Kapilavatu. So he attended upon the Buddha and, uh, and listened to the Dharma and then listened uh, to the Dharma discourses from the Sangha. So he says that um, after going to attend to this, he went back to the congested town of Kapilavatu. So that when he sees strays, horses, elephants, chariots, then he says he loses his mindfulness. Then he says, if I lose my mindfulness uh, now and I should die now, where would I go? Is that what we all worried about? At a point of like a death, where will we go? So the Buddha told him, don't worry. Don't worry about your death. It will not be a bad one. Don't worry about your demise. Because he says that he has been fortified. Fortified, yeah? You know your food is fortified with omega, with vitamins. That means it's strengthened, right, yeah? So he says, your mind has been strengthened by the Buddha Dharma Sangha. And your mind has been strengthened uh, by faith. You have confidence in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. And you are virtue, sila. You have sila. And you have learning. And you are generous. And you are wise. So you say you have these qualities. So he says, you have these qualities, your demise will not be a bad one. Then here, the, all these sutras are about 74, 80% of them then say, what are the four factors for stream entry? He said the four factors of stream entry are Confirm confidence. Confirm confidence in the Buddha. Buddha's enlightenment. Now, Buddha, he said it in the Mahasiha Nanda Sutta. That means the lion's roar. The greater discourse of the lion's roar. There was a particular bhikkhu who disrobed and he went around like disparaging. But then the Buddha in his 80th year roared the lion's roar. There is a long discourse, but the important part of this discourse in, is that he talked about the four integrities. The four integrities he say that he have, the Buddha say he have. And what are the four integrities? He say number one, he is fully enlightened. 
fully enlightened. And then even to the five first athletics uh, that he met, he says, for the six years, I didn't say I'm enlightened. But now I say I'm enlightened. And I will share with you the discourses. So he says he is very integrity. His integrity says are full. And he says that I am fully enlightened. That is his first integrity. And he says he is stainless. That means he has no stain at all. He is perfectly pure. You are all stained, right? You all got a lot of makeup around, huh? <laughs> right? Huh? Then sometimes Nippon pain, etc. But then the taints, uh, he don't have any taints at all. He says he's free of taint of sense pleasures. Okay? And he's free of views, the taint of views. And he's free of ignorance. And he's free of existence. Existence, that means becoming. <coughs> Sense pleasures, views, becoming, ignorance. So he's free of all those things. But the third thing that he declared is most important. And what he declared, he said, I can show others how to get out of samsara. He said, I can show others the way out. So this is, he said he can show the way out. I find that this is the most important. So if he is fully enlightened, so he is stainless, he ma. But then he says he can show us out of the suffering. So that is the most important part. And that he will say that whatever obstructions he says those are, they are the obstructions. These are the obstructions. So you be aware of them. So he declared in the greater discourse of the lion's roar that he was fully enlightened, that he was stainless and that he can show us the way out. And he will say that what are the obstructions, how to overcome them. So this is his uh, integrity and what he declared. And that this confirmed confidence in the Buddha is that he is fully enlightened and he truly knows the truth and that you will go to him and know others. That is the confirmed uh, confidence in the Buddha. Then we have confirmed uh, confidence in the Dharma. So he says that the Dharma is timeless, can be seen, can be entered. The Dharma, so the Buddha always tells his uh, disciples, those who come and listen, he says, what, they will ask, what do you mean by this? He says, if you know you are angry, do you know you are angry? Or that you are like desiring? Or that you are confused? Do you know? If you know, then there is the Dharma. You know that you are lustful, you are hateful, you are deluded. You know. And then you also know that you are not lustful, you are not hateful, you are not deluded, and you know. If you know, then you know the Dharma. So this is a very short phrase in one of the suttas. They say, what do you mean by the Dharma? That you say that it can be entered upon to know, right? Then, of course, then we have the uh, confidence in the Arya Sangha. In the Arya Sangha who practiced the way, Right, yeah? So we don't be uh, discouraged if there are sangha who misbehave. Right, yeah? Those are just uh, men uh, in yellow robes. Okay? So don't be uh, discouraged when you hear you know, sangha members misbehaving. Right, yeah? But the sangha members who are on the practice and on the path, these are the Arya Sangha. So you have confirmed 
confidence in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. Then he says, then you have the four factor. He always said four factors. Huh? So the Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha, one, two, three. And then the fourth factor, fourth factor, he will say that, so people have uh, confidence in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. Say, I have confidence. That doesn't mean that uh, you enter the stream. He says that you need to have another fourth factor. And then the fourth factor is virtues. Dear to the noble ones. So it is blameless actions. So some mafia boss, uh, but when they are about to die, they will call the, the priest to come to uh, you know, have their whatever. So it doesn't mean uh, that you just have somebody come to tell you something, uh, it clans. It's, it means uh, that you have confidence in the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha and the practice. So the practice that he say is the virtues. So we all talk about the five precepts, right? So those are the practice and more because this is very clear cut. You know, then uh, you are, you know, if it's so clear cut, uh, it's about killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, uh, you know, and the speech. And then, of course, we have the not taking the intoxicants. But then the not clear cut is the what? The bicycles all floating around in the <laughs> island. Uh. Those are not clear cut, right? Yeah, so these are the things you must do things that are blameless. Right, huh? So there's virtues. He's about maybe 80% of that, the 74 suttas. He says that these are the four factors. Right. Then, then he says all, all huh? that you see arising and passing away. Of all phenomena of physical and mental phenomena. They come, they go. The breath come, the breath go. The feelings of pleasure come, the feelings of pleasure go. The feelings of pain come, and the feelings of pain go. And the thinking, the thoughts come and go. Your will come and go. Your consciousness comes and go, especially when you fall asleep. Right, huh? Then you're not very aware. So you know that the five aggregates all come and go. If you can see arising and passing away, then he says that there is another factor. Or he says that you are generous. No hint of uh, stinginess. If you're giving, so there's less of I, more of others. So that is, he says, if you have these four factors, Confirm confidence in the Buddha, the Dharma, the Arya Sangha, and the virtues, all seeing arising and passing away, all very generous in your materials and your time, etc. Then he says, is a one who has uh, be free from the lower realms. Free, yeah? free from the lower realms. What are the lower realms? So it is the hell realm, the animal realm, the ghost realm, and other miserable states. So you will be free. And then he says that about seven lives, seven lifetime more, and that the seven lifetime of uh, if. Uh, of suffering. Uh, if, you, if you have seven lifetimes more, then it's seven lives more. And that is the limit of your suffering. So he says that you will be free of this. Then he says stream. What is stream? He says stream is the eightfold path. Eightfold path. That is the stream. You see, you constantly think of the right understanding of the Four Noble Truths. 
than the right thoughts, speech, action, livelihood, uh, etc. will come. If you base on your right understanding, your right understanding is only suffering and end of suffering. Nothing, no, no rocket science, no, no difficulty. Because the understanding of what? The understanding of only suffering and end of suffering. So it's not difficult. So whatever option you take, you say that will it cause suffering to myself, to others, to society? If it causes suffering, then don't do. Right? Yeah? So there is this constant uh, thinking uh, where you uh, contact whatever, whatever decision you make, you have that eightfold path in mind. So he says, you enter the stream, which is the eightfold path, and this stream will lead on to the ocean of freedom. This stream will lead once, uh, the, the, the stream is, it will go to the ocean. Every stream goes to the ocean. If it doesn't dry up, it goes all the way to the ocean. And that this stream has a lot of merits. They say that the stream has a lot of merits. What the merits means? That means you will receive the nutriment of happiness. That means you will be happy. And that this happiness is immeasurable, cannot be measured. And he says that why cannot uh, measure? He says it's like the ocean. Can you measure the volume of water in the ocean? Can you? Cannot. Okay, so that means, he says, the merits is immeasurable. It's like not able to measure the volume of water in the oceans. So that's why the, that is the uh, effect. And that's why there's this sharing of merits. Because it's immeasurable, you can share those merits, uh, especially if you have done a meditation session. Right. So this is roughly what he uh, talked about, the stream entry. But what are the four other, four other things that you have to do to cultivate, to achieve this confirm uh, confidence? Etc. is that you must be able to hear or be associate. First, you must associate, he say, with superior person. The noble persons. And then you must hear the true Dharma. Hear the true Dharma and then you must pay careful attention. And then you have to practice. So it must be the uh, noble persons who know the true Dharma. So that he says that you will meet with the good soil. He says, you know, in a time of India, there were many teachers and there were many students. And if you go for the teacher who is not enlightened and you practice accordingly, then the teacher which is poor soil, then you become the poor seed and then you get the poor fruit. So he says, you must associate with the superior persons and hear the true Dharma. Right. And then you must pay careful attention to what is being said. And then after you pay careful attention, you must practice. So the Buddha is right. We are all able to achieve uh, enlightenment because every one of us has very good attention. And why I say that all of you have very good attention is I can see Nine out of ten people in the MRT are always watching <laughs> their phone. So you have so much attention on the phone. Uh, it is just there is the attention. So the attention is not the 
wise attention. So we have to put our attention on the wise attention, the wise attention that lead you out of suffering. So if your priority is wrong, your attention uh, is on other things other than your studies, uh, when you're supposed to be a student, the responsibility is to be studying. But then if your uh, attention goes to other things on the phone, on other, other things, then the time spent is not careful, not wise. So we all have the capacity, I believe we have all the capacity yeah, to realize because we have the attention. And that attention uh, to actually uh, go on the path, it's called chanda. All start with C. Craving start with C, you know. Everything, so this craving, uh, uh, have a bad name, uh, so craving. But then chanda, when you want to have attention on the path, it's called chanda. So you must have desire to practice. Desire to hear, associate with superior persons, hear the true dharma, have your careful attention, and then practice. Then it will lead you to the uh, stream. So this is what is uh, being said. You can read the suttas in the uh, collected discourses. Okay. Now we are going to talk about uh, lay persons. Uh. So the lay persons <laughs> the sutta in the collected discourses was the well one. Now uh, we talked about the well one first. Dharma Dina. So this is uh, not the uh, bhikkhuni. This is a uh, lay man. Right, Dharma Dina. And then he visited the Buddha and he said that, Hey, um, dear Venerable Sir, can you uh, teach us a way whereby we will uh, be able to practice the Dharma? Then the Buddha told him that you could actually uh, practice the more supra mundane sort of practices, like to have perception of emptiness. Then Dharma Dina says, how can I practice perception of emptiness? I love durian. I love, uh, I love to have the sandalwood. You know, I like to have the garlands. I like to have my home all filled with children. How can I practice that? So the Buddha then tell him, then you must have confidence in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. Right, huh? And that uh, and practice your virtues. So there is Dharma Dina. Then you have another one from the the bamboo gate. The bamboo gate and this bamboo gate uh, are the people who uh, stay in the village, and then they also want to ask the Buddha, how can we practice? Then the Buddha says that you have confidence in the Buddha Dharma Sangha. And then he tells them the virtues. He says that the virtues are what? He says that if you do not want to be uh, killed and you do not want others to kill you, you don't want to kill others too. Because it's very unpleasant, isn't it? To be killed. Right? You all seen the JB thing, right? I'm sure many of you have seen the JB story. In the tube. I mean, this, this, uh, this is very unpleasant and very uh, un uh, disagreeable. So he says if you feel that this is killing is disagreeable to yourself and to others, then don't do. And not only that uh, don't do, uh, so our precepts is don't do, he asked the people of the bamboo gate not to do, not to do, and then he says he tell them to tell others not to do. So he exhort others not to do, not to kill. And then praise non-killing. So there are three parts to the precepts that the Buddha say. 
to exhort others not to do the killing, and then praise non-killing. So it's the, it goes on to talk about the five precepts. So that's how he says you should train yourself in the fourth part. Then now we talk about the ill person. So Ananda Pintika, Ananda Pintika was very, very sick. So he then uh, asked Sariputta to come to see him. And Sariputta said, how are you? And he says, I'm not doing well. I'm feeling very, very painful. My pains are getting worse. So then, then he told, Sariputta told him, he says that if you have, uh, you must consider your confidence in the Buddha. If you consider the confidence in the Buddha, your pain can subside. So he went through. He went through confirmed confidence. You consider your confirmed confidence in the Buddha. Because Ananda Pindika was the one who donated Jeta uh, Vana, right? Jeta Vana to the Buddha and the Sangha. So he has a uh, very firm confidence in the Buddha. So you say you have confirmed confidence in the Buddha, your pain may subside and stop. And then he went on to say, if you have confirmed confidence in the Dharma, your pain may subside and stop. You must consider. So when you consider, you are joyous. So your pain may stop. So your mind can only be at one place at one time, either joyous or pain. So if it's joyous, your pain may stop. Then it says, you may consider your confidence in the Arya Sangha. And then your pains may subside and stop. Then he went very slowly about the precepts. And then he go by the precepts, the virtues. If you have the virtues that the nobles, uh, noble ones uh, are whole, then you, uh, your pains may stop. So he talked about the four. Then he went through again. Do you have, do you con consider your <coughs> confidence uh, in your right understanding, in your right view of the four noble truths? So he, he built it up. So Ananda Pintika has the right view on the uh, right understanding of the Four Noble Truths. And then he considered that, and then he went through right view, right thoughts. He considered the right thoughts. He considered the right speech. He considered the right action. He considered the right livelihood. He considered the right effort. He considered the right mindfulness. He considered the right concentration. He considered the right knowledge. And he considered the right liberation. So 10. And then his pains subsided. And then he got up from the bed and served Venerable Sariputta. When the Sariputta went back to report to the Buddha, the Buddha says, Sariputta taught stream entry in 10 modes. So 10 modes, uh, the Eightfold Path plus the other two, knowledge and liberation. So this is what the Buddha say uh, to Sariputta. This is Ananta Pindika. This is the 10 modes. So this is, uh, you also can consider this, consider the confirmed confidence in Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, Confer consider the confidence in the entire Eightfold Path, consider the right knowledge and the right liberation. Right. Then we talk about the dying. The dying, the dying, uh, we have this uh, man uh, called Dika Wu, and he was uh, gravely sick. And so he asked his father. His father was called Jyotika, and he called his father, 
householder Jodika, can you go to the Buddha and pay respects? Can you ask the Buddha to come to see me because I'm sick? Right, huh? And then Jodika, his father, went to the Buddha and the Buddha went to see the uh, Dikavu. And then the Buddha asked Dikavu, how are you feeling? Are you feeling better? Are your pain subsiding? They say, no, my pain is increasing. It's very bad. Then the Buddha says, at this time, please have confirmed confidence in the Buddha, in the Dharma, in the Sangha, and in your virtues. And then Dikavu's reply to the Buddha was, I have all these four. Then the Buddha says, then you have declared that you are, have entered the stream. Then he says, you have six more to consider. And what is the six more to consider? He says, can you consider the three characteristics? We call it other, uh, ADA, Anicca, Dukkha, Anatta, ADA. Uh. So these are the first three. Then he said, consider uh, four, five, six. It's not KFC, uh, <laughs> but it's AFC. Okay, I don't replace with K. Uh. This is abandon and then fading and then cessation. He says, uh, you have considered all formations as impermanent suffering and non-self. He say, I have these perceptions. Then abandon them because they are impermanent. Uh, dukkha and anatta. If you abandon, you see them fading and ceasing. He says, I also have these six. Then what are you worried about? Then uh, he says, I'm worried about Jyotika. That means his father. Then the Buddha says, don't worry about him. Right, yeah? You focus on this. Right. And then soon after, Dikavu uh, passed away. And of course, the people, uh, very capo one, uh, were asked, you know, where he go? Then the Buddha says, he has become a non-returner. So you can see that for the four Confirm Buddha, confidence in the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. Then, and the virtues, or seeing arising and passing away. Then he says, if you practice these six, and you have no uh, more sort of attachments, then it will go, if you have the five lower fetters removed, then goes to the uh, non-returner state. Okay, so this is dying. Then we talk about the date. Then there is this mirror of Dharma. You know, in the Mahaparinibbana Sutta, the Buddha will uh, have to reply to all Ananda's questions. You all know that Venerable Ananda became uh, the personal attendant of the Buddha on the condition that whatever he asked, the Buddha will reply. And so, when Ananda was very curious about the bhikkhus and the bhikkhunis and the lay men and lay women who died and where they go, he asked the Buddha, where did they go? So a whole long list. Then the Buddha said, I'm worried, weary, tired no, of uh, replying you. He says, I'll teach you the mirror of the Dharma so that if you look at the mirror of Dharma, you can declare to yourself, whether you have entered the stream or not. So he talked about the confirmed confidence in the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, or the virtues. Right here. Yeah? So this is the uh, mirror of the Dharma. Then we have 
ซาราคานีซาริกซาราคานี passed away and then uh, the Buddha declared him to be a stream enterer the other Sakyans were not very happy with it because they say Sara Kani didn't do his training he was a drinker he was uh, he takes alcohol so then the then they uh, you know Mahanama came to ask the Buddha and the Buddha says Sarakani at the moment of his uh, death completed that training. I mean, he did his training. He saw the Dharma at the point of death, and he had joyous wisdom and swift wisdom, and he had entered the stream. So then we can see a very detailed cause of how the Buddha discussed. About Sarakani yeah, and anybody yeah, uh, uh, who passed away, and then where they go. So if you have confi confidence in the Buddha, Dharma, and then Sangha, have joyous uh, liberation, uh, joyous wisdom, and swift wisdom. And liberation, removal of fetters. Then the attainment. Then whether the lower realms uh, of hell, uh, animals, and ghosts. Uh. So if the person has confirmed confidence in the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, and have joyous wisdom. And swift wisdom, and is liberated and have no fetters, then his attainment is an arahant, and he will not go to the lower realms. Okay, yeah. Then, if the person has confirmed confidence in the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, joyous wisdom, swift wisdom, and uh, not completely liberated, he only remove five fetters. Then he is a non-returner. So in that particular sutta, he says that uh, it's not completed, uh, liberated, minus three factors and reduce the last hatred and delusion. Then it's a once returner. So doesn't go to the lower realms. But he says uh, that from here, if one is very diligent, then he can, uh, at the point of death, realize nibbana. At the point of death, uh, he let go. And that it can be in the <coughs> interval, he let go. Or that on landing, he let go. And, and on, with effort, with, without effort, without effort, with effort. So the non-returner can still realize the. Can still realize at death. And then or the interval. Interval uh, before landing uh, like the aeroplane uh, okay uh, So at the interval realize then poof, okay. So disappeared. Then, if let's say huh, it landed, huh, then oh, quickly take off. So you take off without effort. But then, huh, if you landed huh, and you are like, oh, very nice place, huh, then you realize that, oh, this is not what I want. Quickly take off and then with effort you take off. But then, if let's say huh, you still have not uh, realized completely, then it will go to the Akanita realm. That means it goes to the pure abodes. So this is what he says. Then the, this is a once returner.
Then he says, uh, this is the stream enterer. But he then tells, tells uh, the person may not have this, may not have all this. Uh, so all these are free, free, uh, freed from the lower realms. But if you have five faculties, uh, five faculties, like faith, confidence, mindfulness, concentration, effort, uh, wisdom, uh, and you kind of can accept the Buddha's teaching, or you have sufficient confidence, then that person does not go to hell or the lower realms. So there are many, many nice people around, right? So the doors of heaven are not only open to Buddhists. Uh. The doors of heaven are open to any with, uh, who are good practitioners also. So they will not go to the lower realms, but they are not free from the lower realms. That's the difference. So this is what he says in, that, uh, in this uh, sutta, Sarakani. So in this sutta, he tells that uh, uh, at the point of death, he, Sarakani, has joyous wisdom and swift wisdom. Right, so this is, this is uh, the, in Sarakani. And he tells about the stages of enlightenment at the time of uh, passing on. Okay. Okay, ah? now we shall go. Is it too heavy? <laughs> Never mind, I'll just uh, go back. You can read the sutta by yourself. This last one uh, is the... This last one is uh, Mahanama asking the Buddha that... Uh, how does a wise lay person counsel another wise lay person on dying when the person is gravely sick? So this is what the Buddha taught. He says you can tell of the four consolations to that person, four consolations that you have confirmed confidence in the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, and his virtues. So once the person uh, uh, you talk to is a Buddhist and you talk, oh, you have confirmed. So the person uh, is sort of uh, in the mind happy and open to further talking, further counseling. Then he says this. Are you worried about your parents? Then the person says, I am worried about my parents. Like Dikavu uh, is worried about Jyotika. Say, I'm worried about my parents. Then he says, you are subjected to death. You are subjected to death. So whether or not you are anxious about it, you are going to die anyway. So he says, Please abandon that anxiety over your parents. Then after that, you wait. Then he says, then the person says, I have abandoned it. Then after he has abandoned that, so this is the parents. Uh, because we are, first we are very close to our parents. Then the second, he talked about the spouse and the children. He said, um, are you worried about your spouse and children? Then he says, I am. Then he says, you are subjected to death, you are about to die. So, you know, don't worry about your uh, spouse and children. Please abandon that anxiety. So then, the person, if he has abandoned, so although he never say, uh, I think to complete, I uh, also must say about siblings. Uh, 
Nah? I mean, he, he talk about spouse, children, the usual sort of household unit. But there are siblings also that you may be anxious about. So abandon that anxiety because you're going to die anyway. Then he went on to say that, uh, are you uh, the five C's? La? So are you uh, anxious about your property, your car, your credit card, your sense, pleasures, your jewelry? Are you uh, anxious about that? Then, if you're anxious on it, you're about to die anyway. So abandon those. So he says, the earthly pleasures uh, are very low. Celestial pleasures are higher. Then he then lead him to the higher realms. To the heavenly realms. So the heavenly realms, he start off with the four great kings. Right, yeah? Four great kings and then Tawatimsa and then you have the, the rest. Lah. You have the, the devas who create and then you have the devas who control the, the other devas who create. So they have a lot. They have, so then after they reach the Brahma world. Then at the Brahma world, he says that uh, these are all impermanent. All these heavenly realms are also impermanent. And so you let go of that identity, the sense of the identity. And then letting go, he can realize. So this is how he lead them to the higher realms that, that is impermanent. So I think it's a standard protocol, no? You can you can read uh, uh, Dana Jani. You can read uh, one of the uh, Sariputta also did Dana Jani the Brahmin, and then he left him at the Brahma world. Then he says uh, this Brahmin sir uh, love the uh, Brahma, love to be united with Brahma. So Dana Jani was a uh, Brahmin who has backslided, he sort of like cheated the government, uh, the king, uh, and then he cheated the, uh, the citizens also. And then apparently he married a wife that is of a different faith. And then when Sariputta came to know, he went to counsel uh, Dana Jani and then uh, tell him that at the time of your death, uh, if uh, you know Yama will come knocking at the door, and that uh, you, if you do any wrong, you may be having to go to the lower realms. So he says that, you know, even if you say that you do all this uh, to service your parents, to service your, to care for your parents, to care for your children, your spouse, your workers, etc., etc., when the time comes, uh, even though all these people will group up and plea to Yama not to bring you down, who will go down? for all those actions. So uh, Dana Jani sort of woke up and he turned over a new leaf. And then by and by he was very sick. And then uh, Sariputta went to see him. And then he led him to the Brahma world. And then when he left, he left, uh, uh, Dana Jani passed away. And Sariputta went to report to the Buddha. And the Buddha then scolded Sariputta. Why didn't you complete the journey? Because he has the capacity to complete. This is the, one of the suttas you hear the Buddha sort of like chastising Sariputta. But actually it's just to say that if you can lead, you just finish the job. And I also suspect that this may be the way uh, that the Buddha did the for his father, who at the deathbed uh, realized arahanship. But for Dana Jani, uh, the method different because it's a non Buddhist. Ma. And how it started is that he will say to Dana Jani uh, at, the, at that time, 
he will say, is uh, hell better or the animal realm better? Then Danajani said, animal realm better. Then he will ask, is uh, ghost realm better or animal realm better? Ghost realm better. You're surprised, right? And uh, some people say, why? The animal so cute. You know, <laughs> I think animal realm better. <laughs> My friend tell me animal realm better. But I say, you know, ghosts, uh, you can talk, you know. Then you can uh, ask him, you know, go to a better place. The other day I heard a story yeah, from a monk who says that there was a person with a disease and she was at the wit's end and also went to see the monk. And the monk sort of says that there is a, a being in her and that the being was like taking revenge because she sort of like killed her before in a previous life. So the monk counsel this spirit and says that, you know, uh, there's no end to this and that she will do merits and pass to you. So it was like negotiated and it was like, okay, so you know, don't disturb the lady anymore. So you know, ghosts you can counsel, no? <laughs> Animals have to counsel. <laughs> okay, huh? So, but then, huh? Uh, so ghost realm is said to be better than animal realm. Then, of course, then it says human realm is better or the ghost realm. Then, of course, human, nah, right? <coughs> then, after that, you got talk about slowly the, the four great kings, the Tao Timsa, the Yama, the Tusita, the Nimana Rati, the Para Nimata, Vasa Vata, and then after that, the Brahma. And then he left him there. So this is how they lead for non-Buddhists. Uh, Start from the lower, going up. That they lead. Whereas the, the Buddhists, the, the Buddha, say with confidence, and then lead up to the heavenly realms. And then that's, after the heavenly realms, say, these are all impermanent. And then uh, to let go. So this is how he uh, led them to the... Uh, the talks, okay? So, so I come to the end. You have any questions before we start our uh, sort of like uh, at twelve o'clock? I will start the meditation based on the suttas later on. Yes. Can those in lower realms enter stream entry? Uh, the human realm. Human realm. Yeah. Because they can understand the Dharma. Ma. So the Jataka stories always say animal realms and Bodhisatta also talk about the, uh, that he reborn in the lower realm, animals, and then try to be, uh, to convince the others, uh, I mean, to do good deeds and then uh, lead them to a better life. So these are stories. So the intelligence, uh, the uh, confidence and the knowing uh, still remain in the human realm, human and above. This is my view. Okay, uh? I haven't read a sutta that talk about the animal becoming enlightened. Right, uh, so I have read about uh, Jataka stories, but I think Jataka are just like. Uh, Try to inspire. That's all. Right. As for this, I can think like a simile of taking a leaf. One, two, three, four. Up slowly. <laughs> Any more question? Yes. What's the difference between joyous wisdom and Joyous wisdom, uh, let's say uh, let's say you listen to anything, uh, no, sometimes some people listen to the Heart Sutra. Have you listened to the Heart Sutra? When you listen to a Heart Sutra, you're very joyous. But you may not be wise to its meaning. So that is joyous. In the sense that it's joy, no suffering. But you don't really understand the meaning of the Sutra. That there is no form, no eye, no consciousness. So in that Heart Sutra, it will tell you exactly there is no I, 
no six sense spaces and uh, no six sense consciousness and no six sense objects. And because you have, don't have all this, then there is no feelings, no, uh, you know, no clinging, because everything is uh, anicca, ada, anicca, dukkha, anatta, and then uh, it's seen as it is. So then the, there's this knowledge that things are like that. So there's joyous wisdom. But the joyous wisdom may not translate to uh, swift wisdom. Yes. Um, so far, these cases of death that were mentioned um, are cases where the people may be dying from some illness. So they kind of know they're going to die. There's still time for them to reflect, to check on this and that. What about cases where people die suddenly, like a heart attack or something like that? Oh, okay. So, um, so you see uh, the time of the death uh, suddenly. Um, I wouldn't know. Lah. <laughs> I wouldn't know exactly. Uh, but I will just uh, say uh, that uh, how the Buddha replied Mahanama. He says, uh, if, you're, if the, the body is just a body, so he says that when you die, it's just like a pot holding oil. And that if the pot is uh, go into the uh, lake, so it sink in the lake, and then you knock the uh, pot and it breaks up. And then this uh, material will go down, and then the oil will float up. So the mind of the person who died, yeah, is the nature, if it's a, nature is like that, he will uh, sort of like float up to distinction. So in the same sutta to Mahanama, he said that if a person has, the mind has been fortified in a very positive way, then uh, it uh, rises to distinction. And then the body is just cast away. Cast away for the dogs, for the cats, for the jackals, for the vultures, the body just cast away. But the mind then rise to distinction. So the other thing is that last time when you're young, we always read stories, right? Stories about, you know, you don't turn back. <laughs> when you go, you just move on or whatever. So, uh, so if the being uh, is like spontaneously became a ghost, so you have all these funeral services, right? And they have this bell, ding, 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 ding. And then you have like so many, and then you call the name. Then after that, oh, oh, I'm dead, you know. So I just take rebirth from the uh, from that ghost realm or whatever to the whatever other realms that the karma brings the being. So you let go. So there are a lot of uh, you know uh, the thinking uh, that may be just a transition phase if the being cannot let go. So people would like go through. They will go to the place of the accident, then there will be some chanting at the place of the accident. So these are ways and means by which uh, monks uh, uh, do services uh, in case that being still cling to the uh, place. Okay. You all can read the suttas. I think the administrator will send out to you all if you ask uh, for the sutta. Yes. Hi. Uh, well, I'm relatively new to Buddhism, so right. I understand that in Buddhism, blind faith is not a recommendation. So I, I'm quite skeptical about like the case for rebirth, is there any like materials that can materials like um to like remove this doubt that I have about rebirth? Rebirth, yeah. Okay, so let's say that uh, we say that uh, depending on your karma, uh, you take rebirth. That's the only uh sort of 
where you go depends on what your tendency to think. So you can see karma even in life. So if you don't study, you'll get bad grades. That's karma. And you take rebirth in having to stay back a year. So that is rebirth in the real world. So let's say uh, this is actually just mental rebirth. But uh, uh, in the same family, in the same family, you can see that uh, siblings may have different uh, characters, different uh, futures, different outcomes. This is because of their karma inheritance. They have brought over positive qualities, and so that positive quality may stay with them. And then some brings over a very negative, and that may be quite negative. So you can see different family members having different karmic inheritances. Then this karma is a natural judge. Okay, uh, you may kill, steal, whatever, no? and you may not get caught. But there is a natural judge. The natural judge will penalize and uh, will suffer accordingly to the realms. So uh, it is uh, just. So rebirth is uh, a phenomena that uh, uh, happened. Uh, and I think there have been literature that says that they can remember their past lives. So I think there's actually in the YouTube, there are like young people who can like remember the past life was who, etc. And that he can identify the people or whatever. And then, of course, you have the lamas. Because they want to come back again, and then people identify their, the lamas by whether the young kid uh, chose the thing uh, that the old lama liked. And because, you know, the young lama would have like, liked certain items, so he would go for certain items. That is their uh, tendencies. So I think in the, um, it's better to, uh, to see for yourself karma in action. The, you know, the Singapore home of the Singapore boys home, uh, you can see rebirth there. You know, they are trapped there. This is uh, karma. This is what you do, you land it there. Or the prisons. Or your, the tendencies. Some people like to uh, drink or whatever. They go to the pubs. So they, that's their, their, they take rebirth there. Okay? Uh? So you took rebirth here today because you want to know. So you came to this place. Right? Huh? So this is uh, rebirth. Rebirth in that sense. So uh, figuratively and uh, physically, there are evidences. So to actually uh, win, they say, you, whether you believe or not, uh, it is better to believe uh, than not to believe. So why when you believe that there is karma, you will do good? When you do good, uh, you will reap the fruits of being good in this life. And then you also uh, uh, have a, a gamble uh, for the next life. Because you did good, it's likely uh, that you will have a good life another, if you have another life. So you win in this life and in the next life. If you don't believe, but then natural processes, you will also win. So it is a win-win situation. So if you, uh, you can try, you know, if you do this, all these wholesome things, you get good results. You do unwholesome things, you get unwholesome results. It's a given. You, you, this one is like a uh, no-brainer, no? This is, you, you, everything uh, is, you do good, you get good. So they say, avoid evil, do good, purify the mind. This is the basic teaching of the Buddhas. This avoid evil. And then, do good. That is karma. And then purify the mind. And then the rebirth is 
will come accordingly. It is a natural process. If it is, if there's still one thing, there will be a becoming. Just like you want to come here, there will be a becoming. You know? So that is, in that sense, the movement of the mind. And then when you land, you stay there, uh, that is, and you like that place very much, then you take roots. So it is like becoming, uh, staying there. Like people become citizen. You know, they go to another land. They land there. They like it. They uh, take root there. So they take rebirth in another country. Others come to our country. They take citizenship. It's some sort of like rebirth. Okay, we shall start the meditation. 12 to 12.30. So just now we had the sessions uh, earlier on. So we will just also uh, go on body, feeling and mind. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Can we all lower the lights so that it's not so glaring? Okay. You just make yourself as comfortable as possible. Just breathe in, breathe out. Take long in-breath and out-breath just to relax yourself. Calm your body. After the long breath, you just let go and just watch the long and short of the breath. Then you see the entire breath, the entire in-breath, the beginning, the middle, the end, and the pause in between. Breathing in, breathing out. Calm your body. Notice the sensations in the body.
and in the mind. Now then, you ask yourself, do I have confirmed confidence in the Buddha? And see how your body responds. Breathe in, breathe out. Then you ask yourself, breathing in, breathing out, whether you have confirmed confidence in the Dharma, and see how your body responds. Breathe in, breathe out. Do you have confirmed confidence in the Dharma? yourself, do I have confirmed confidence in the Arya Sangha? Breathing in, breathing out. You have confidence in your own virtues. In abstaining from killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, false speech. Intoxicants. All health. 
have you the confidence that you know about arising and passing away of phenomena? Breathing in, breathing out. Oh, you are very generous. We are time, the materials. Then I'll go into the death review. Imagine that there's only 15 minutes more to live. So you have done the four consolations. We are now go to do the rest. You are subject to dying and death. Are you worried about your parents, your mother or father? You are about to die anyway, so don't be anxious about your mother or father. Please abandon that anxiety. Breathe in, breathe out. I will assume you have abandoned the anxiety. Then we we'll go on to the next. You are subject to death anyway. Are you anxious about your spouse or children or siblings? You're about to die anyway. So then, leave your anxiety, abandon the anxiety for your spouse, for your children, for your siblings. Breathe in, breathe out.
assume you have abandoned the anxiety, the subject to death anyway. Are you anxious about your five C's? Your condo, your house, your car, your jewelry, your safe deposit box, etc., etc. You're about to die anyway. Please abandon the anxiety for the earthly pleasures. Breathing out. You can go to the heavenly mind states. These are impermanent anyway. You can let go of this volition. You let go and you experience. Experience the letting go. This is the end of the. So you ground yourself. Feel the lower half of your body. So this, uh, as you go through uh, and you experience your own bodily uh, responses to the questions. Um, you will know what to do for yourself for the New Year resolution, right? And then uh, you also know what you need to cherish, the loved ones that you have, and then uh, the letting go is your own uh, effort, 
Okay, so I think I come to end. Any questions? Or I think we, we have to do the puja, right? Any final question? Hope this uh, today's talks and uh, practice not too strong. Doctor <laughs> promise there won't be any side effect. Only side effect will lead you to enlightenment only. Correct, Doctor. Doctor, I have uh, one question. Just now during the talk, you mentioned that we have to uh, associate uh, with the superior and uh, learn the right dharma. So uh, my question is, how we know that this teacher uh, is qualified and the dharma which we learned is true <laughs> or is, is right? So the Buddha would be your only teacher. So the Buddha uh, teaches in the suttas. So you practice according to what the Buddha teaches in the suttas. So you should, uh, you are able to read and then from the net, so you will be able to know whether the person or the teacher's teaching are aligned to the Buddha's teachings. So the Buddha should be your teacher, and the teachings are in the recorded in the suttas. And then you do your practice, you do your own uh, sila, so then, and, uh, and your samadhi, and then your panya. So these are all trial and error. So I cannot uh, tell you which teacher is the good teacher, etc. Like a doctor, I never say if the patient go to another doctor, A. Eh. So we're all very uh, open. Anywhere you can go. But you must always go back to the Buddha and his teachings. That is the most important so there are teachings nowadays uh, that talk about uh, sex intercourse, that it is uh, the enlightening uh, experience to Nibbana. So that partner is definitely a no-no because the Buddha says that uh, for the monks, Parajika, that means he will be defeated if he had sexual intercourse. And sexual intercourse, not only with females, males, or animals, because it is the desire for sexual intercourse. So there might be uh, Sangha members who, because of evolution in the history and the development of the Sangha and the schools, then you may have uh, extreme practice like this. Uh. So you must be very clear. This is not what the Buddha taught. So he's very clear in the suttas. He says that an arahan do not, uh, arahan are celibates. Okay, and then um, they will ask the lay people to practice uh, eight precepts. And then eight precepts is also no sexual intercourse. So this is an extreme example of, uh, of an example that you should uh, be able to dis be discerning of what is true teaching. So you have the uh, Dharma and the precepts to guide you. Uh, sorry, I just want to add. Uh, I, of course, I cannot go to the Buddha now. Uh, my, my question is, let's say, for, for instance, I'm new, and so I, now I come to BF and listen to you. So how I know that uh, your teaching is... <laughs> It's, it's true. <laughs> All right. So uh, it's like you have to practice. So you see there are four parts of it. So you have so you have only three. Let's say you associate, you actually uh, hear the Dharma, then you pay careful attention, then after that you have to practice. So the fourth part is the practice. So when you practice, you know what it is, then uh, it is, uh, gives you progressive results and transformation for a better you, then you think that you are on the right path. But that if you review every year, especially end of the year, uh, I review my year, what have I done? 
Okay, yeah. So you actually review. So we have a reflective. We reflect. You cannot be like just do, 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 do. You know? You have to like stand back, reflect on what you have done, what you have practiced, and then uh, whether you want to, you think that this is the right path, and then you go for it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Just like a year end closing, you do your own internal audit, no external audit. <laughs> Any final question before I uh, do the closing and uh, <coughs> we uh, do some announcement? Uh, hi, Dr. Ern. Uh, just now, we, when we were meditating, we were contemplating on death. So um, I was just thinking, if at the deathbed, somebody has terminal illness, and then there's pain, is it better to um, endure the pain and die in an alert manner, or take the painkiller and then go in a groggy <laughs> way? All right. Um, it actually, uh, I, I like the the Buddhist teaching. The Buddhist teaching has this big, big teaching called depending on conditions. They call it dependent on conditions. So I will say that depending on conditions, that you will move accordingly. So it's like uh, you look at the situation and you uh, manage the situation depending on the conditions. So if let's say this particular person is having so much pain that you know that there is a relief and you do not know when the person will be passing on. You don't want his last hours to be in pain, right? So anyway, uh, there is a slow transitional process. Usually it doesn't, uh, it's not only a dying uh, day, it may be the dying days. So uh, they say that uh, morphine uh, does not have a ceiling. So that means you can start low and go slow. So then the uh, pain relief from the medicine will take effect and the person will not be groggy. So uh, having that relief from the pain, the person may be able to be happier, less stressful, and then be able to be more at peace and be able to do more things. Right. So it's not a last minute thing. All this like practice, uh, it's not last minute. But then uh, it's better late than never. And so the practice actually begin as early as possible. So you would then enjoy the fruits of your labor. So, uh, so that is to say uh, that depending on conditions. Then the other situation is that particular person, the person may have a view that I do not want this. So then that view has to be respected. So it is like uh, if he is able to turn to non-pharmacological ways to relieve the pain, sometimes they have TCM, they have like massage, they may have aromatherapy, there are lots of things uh, or what is burdening them actually? What are they holding on to? Their pain may be mental pain. It may be something that they need to uh, verbalize. But they cannot talk anymore. So you have to go through the process. So if you are close to the person, you can ask. Because only you will know that the person may have a quarrel with a X, Y, Z, and may want to see that person. So then you bring that person, and then, of course, you must sort of manage that person, don't go into a hysteria, then that will be even worse. So then, of course, it's like bring up, usually people will make peace, so that they can go in peace. So this is mental pain we want to address. So it's like, uh, you know, sometimes, like they want to ensure that their spouse is well taken care of. And then, of course, we have the uh, talk about nakula pitta and nakula mitta. The, the uh, nakula 
Mita and Pita were the uh, previous parents of the Buddha. And uh, Nakula Pita was very sick and like going to die. Then the wife reassured him that, uh, you know, don't, don't flounder, don't be so stressed up. You know, if you have to go, you go. You say, don't be too stressed. Because after you go, I will be able to take care of myself. Don't have to worry about my finances. You know, he says, I'll still turn the loom for the thread, etc. And that he, she will still continue to uh, go to the Sangha, go to the Buddha, and then pay respects. She will still be chaste, etc. So after listening, Nakula Pita became well. Right, huh? So these are like concerns. So you have to like put each concern away. Some people may be like their jewelry, you know. Uh, then they don't worry about your jewelry or whatever. So you have to like go through and then let them let go of the actual mental pain. I think twelve thirty already. <laughs> Sadu, sadu, sadu.